I want to show you a technique to simplify expressions we call rationalizing. And so we want to rationalize these following expressions uh, to simplify. Okay, so what we mean by that is sometimes we don't like having square roots in the denominator. And sometimes square roots in the denominator can be difficult to manage. So for part A, for example, if I want to rationalize this, what I mean is I'm going to multiply what we, by what we call the conjugate. The conjugate would be the square root of 5 plus 2 instead of square root of 5 minus 2. And I'm going to multiply the, the numerator and the denominator by the same expression, which means I'm multiplying by 1. So I'm not really changing anything. It just changes the way it looks. Now why this is useful is because uh, in the numerator, it doesn't really get much better. You get the square root of 14 times the square root of 5 plus 2. In the denominator, though, you have the square root of 5 minus 2 times the square root of 5 plus 2. I can FOIL these out, and when I do, so let's see, we get square root of 14 times the square root of 5 plus 2 in the, de in the numerator. That doesn't really change. But in the denominator, when I FOIL, I have square root of 5 times the square root of 5, which is the square root of 5 squared, becomes 5. I have plus 2 root 5. Then I have a minus 2 root 5. And then lastly, I have a minus 4. So once all this simplifies, I have the square root of 14 times the square root of 5 plus 2 divided by, well, uh, these middle terms cancel out. I have 5 minus 4, which is just 1. So actually, square root of 14 times the square root of 5 plus 2 is my expression, and I don't even have a denominator here. So that worked out very nice, very nicely. Okay, now in the second one, we're going to do a similar thing, and this is a good uh, trick to remember because you, this shows up in calculus a lot, and a lot of students forget. But again, even though I have this um, ugly numerator, I'm still going to multiply by its conjugate. We'll multiply by square root of 36 minus x plus 6 over the square root of 36 minus x plus 6. Okay, now this time I'm going to leave the denominator alone, but in the numerator I have the square root of 36 minus x minus 6 times the square root of 36 minus x plus 6, and we'll do the FOIL method again, and it's going to simplify very nicely. And the denominator, I just leave x times the square root of 36 minus x plus 6. And really, you can just kind of leave the denominator alone here. It's not going to get any nicer. But in the numerator, if you notice, if I multiply the square root of 36 minus x times the 36 minus x, I get the square root of 36 minus x quantity squared. So, so that would be just 36 minus x. Then when I multiply the outside terms, I get a plus 6 times the square root of 36 minus x minus 6. And in the inside, I get a minus 6 times the square root of 36 minus x minus 6. So that looks very ugly, but if you notice, those are actually going to subtract each other out. So even though they're ugly expressions, it doesn't really matter. And then lastly, I have a negative 36. And then all of this is over x times the square root of 36 minus x plus 6. Okay, now in the numerator, notice here, like I said, these two middle ugly terms subtract each other out. And then I have a 36 and a minus 36. And so all I'm really left with is an x in the numerator. And since the x in the denominator is being multiplied across everything, I can actually factor out x over x. So my result then, in the numerator, there's nothing left except the 1. In the denominator, I have 36 minus x plus 6. And if you would like for me to clarify why it's 1 in the numerator, if you remember, I canceled out the x's, but what I had was I had an x in the numerator and an x in the denominator. And so when I cancel those out, what I'm left with in the top is just a 1. 
All right, I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be glad to help, and thank you for watching.